Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Okay, so it is our fall break. I'm so excited. So we are off this week and that means a ton of work for mommy and some random homeschool for the kids. A lot of holiday organizing to get done. Let me tell you something. You moms that are out there like planning whole Thanksgiving dinners and got all your, you know, shopping done early December and stuff. I love you. Like, <laughs> you're amazing and your tips help me so much because I'm not that person, okay? I want to be that person, but I'm not that person. I wanted to try and pick a question um, to answer to kind of help me with these vlogs a little bit since I have many days left of vlogs giving. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying my best, guys. Um, I got the best question through email the other day and I asked if I could answer it in a video um, and she said yes. Okay, so I don't normally make a habit of reading actual emails, but this one I thought was so good and I asked her if I could share. I'm not going to say her name, but you know who you are. <laughs> so um, I'm just going to read a little bit of her email to you and then I'm going to try my best to address it or answer it in some kind of way, shape or form. I want to reach out to you honestly because I want to know how you do it, quote unquote. And when I say that, what I mean is, how do you juggle two businesses and not have the guilt of not doing enough homeschooling with your children? I know the whole spiel, no one can do it all, blah, blah, blah. Let me just say, I love you, okay. <laughs> um, but that's not what I'm reaching for or asking about. I've been homeschooling for four years, so I'm not a newbie nor a veteran. I juggle three businesses home activities we have at least one to two activities a day and of course the regular day-to-day -day errands and home things i just want to talk with someone who has a strong sense of faith and commitment to their children and their businesses yet wants so much to do quote unquote all the things and yet realistically that's not possible in my inner circle i'm the only homeschooler i do belong to groups and charters but no one that i personally know in the thick of it like me Okay. <laughs> okay, first of all, I love your email. <laughs> okay. First of all, I love your email. Okay, and I'm going to try my best to, um, oh, like, it gave me all the feels. Like, <laughs> it really did. Because there is no straightforward answer to this email, and I think, I think you already know that, you know? Like, there's no straightforward answer. However, uh, the, the... The best thing about this email was the part when she says, and I know the whole spiel, no one can do it all, blah, blah, blah. I totally get that. Um, because that is the first thing that people say, is that, you know, no one can do it all, or I'm not doing it all. But when someone asks you, how are you doing it all, I feel like they're basically, or if it were me, you know, I'm basically asking you, how do you accomplish what you are accomplishing? You know? So I totally got your question and I was really trying to figure out how to answer. And because there is no straightforward answer, the biggest thing I could think about was that is kind of sort of why I decided to share these videos in the first place. Because the answers are not cut and dry. It's not. Um, you, I, I, I still have the guilt of what if I'm not doing enough homeschooling for the kids. Um, I still feel guilty about not giving enough to my business. I feel guilty about having my businesses in the first place. I feel guilty about not giving enough to my husband. What? But what I've learned is that I'm always going to feel that way. Um, because our expectations or my expectations are just... They're just unrealistic. <laughs> and unrealistic in the sense that I'm not going to accomplish what I would like to accomplish the way I would like to accomplish it. I think that if I had to give one answer, one cut and dry answer to that question, it would be grace. And grace is one of those things that's hard to kind of wrap your mind around. But I saw this post the other day on Instagram that pretty much summed up grace in like the best way ever. Let me find it. Hold on. 
that the end of yourself is the beginning of grace. That is basically what grace is to me. It's everything, you know, that I attempt to do and when the when there's that point where the end of me arrives, that is where grace comes in. And that is how I accomplish what I do accomplish. I, ho I really hope that makes sense. So that's kind of like the short of things. I think that God has given me a vision of my life and my family and my homeschool and my marriage. Um, I'm a really big dreamer and I, I actually think that we all are and then there's a certain point where some people um, allow themselves to stop dreaming. I never got there. <laughs> but with that, um, with being a big dreamer can come a lot of things like very, very, very heavy frustrations. So I, I deal with that and I, I struggle with that. But I think one thing I decided was to choose not to settle, you know, for less than what God had for me. It's a really interesting thing because we are born into a world where we rely on our senses. And when you're a dreamer and when you have vision, a lot of the things that you, you know, that are inside of your vision are not in the reach, in your reach as far as your senses are concerned. When God gave me a vision to homeschool, I imagined all these really amazing experiences with my kids. And it looked nothing like what was in front of me. So I put it in front of me. I put it in front of me in the form of pictures, words, and I go over those things over and over and over in my mind. And then I take action towards those things. Does that make sense? I don't know. I, I, this is not going to be a sufficient answer to this email, but I'm hoping that the collection of videos that I share and post Instagram posts that I share and blog posts that I share will answer what you are asking. Um, it's like one decision after the next, one failure after the next, but each choice towards your dream or your vision or your goal is a step in the right direction I feel like to me even if it is a failure because I just don't I'm learning that you don't get where you um, imagine yourself being or dream of being without making mistakes and failing and stuff like I mean and just I mean I don't know I don't know I'm trying not to stumble over this but grace has been everything um, to me and maintaining my vision for our family and our homeschool and our businesses. Um, one of the things I struggle with with these videos is that I try to share things honestly. Um, but I, I, I kind of dislike that it's so hard to get on camera the really hard times you know and I try to speak about I try to speak about the hard times and write about the hard times but when I'm really in like hard places there's no way I'm picking up the camera even if I wanted to pick up the camera there's just no way you can like you're in such a hard place and a hard spot that it just feels like it's impossible you know um but the those those moments are like quite often you know in building the businesses, there's a bunch of mistakes and there's a bunch of fears. And um, I do a lot of going back and forth and back and forth in my head about what's, you know, what I should do, what I shouldn't do. There's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that other people just don't see, you know, like investments, like, you know, using your last bit of whatever savings you did manage to accumulate, you know. Um, there's just so much that other people don't see and the only way you can really like have an understanding for the types of sacrifices that people who do, you know, make is to do yourself. So 
it's always something when you're looking on one side and doing all of the research and and things like that um but it's a whole nother ball game when you actually do does that make sense so i'm not doing quote unquote it all but everything that i am doing is by the grace of god <laughs> you know i choose to make steps or to take steps in a certain direction based off of what I dream of and what I imagine. And I really do trust God to help me and to do the rest. So just like it says, the end of yourself is the beginning of grace. So I think the more that you just give what you do have, the more you'll trust that the Lord will take over the rest. I know that this is really vague and I hope to share more of what that looks like in real life and in real life examples. Um, that is kind of why I share these videos and sometimes it's hard because that's what I would like to share and sometimes I'm not sure if I'm actually, if, if that is coming across to people. From a lot of the emails that I receive and the communications I get from you guys, I think it is coming across. <laughs> you know, I mean, I can only do what I can and I just have to trust that God will do the rest. So grace, grace is basically my answer, but I'm gonna try to like, I know this is, I'm sorry, it's, it's all over the place. <laughs> but this is the best way I can answer this. And I didn't really want to answer this in like clear form. I wanted it to be like more like you're sitting down with me. And we're just kind of stumbling through the conversation and the thoughts together. Because I kind of don't like steps, you know. I don't like steps that people just kind of like put out uh, for you to follow. Because... We're, we all have our individual purposes and we all have our individual paths and not one is like the other. So to lay out steps would, for me, be like saying, well, if you do these things, you'll get there. But that's just not the case. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay, so let me... Let me try to bring it back in. So her first question was, how do you not have the guilt? How do you not have the guilt of not doing enough homeschooling with your children? Well, I, like I said before, I don't. I, I do feel the guilt of not doing enough. However, I do have to trust that I take certain steps and the Lord do the rest. Probably at least once a month, I struggle with the temptation to be depressed sometimes it, it wins a little bit and <laughs> and sometimes i shut it down completely before it can even get anywhere but i have those feelings all the time about am i doing enough for each individual child and how they could be doing so much better if they were off somewhere where somebody could give them um, their full undivided attention because me I'm trying to juggle businesses I'm trying to manage my emotions and I've already shared a little bit of how emotional of a person I can be and that on paper seems very problematic in homeschool but hopefully I can share more about that in another video as well yeah so I have that temptation to feel guilty about it but what I have to do is try my best to listen to that God that's on the inside of me in my heart um, concerning each of my children. And I, my job is to try not to allow the noise of other things to get in the way of me following what I know in my heart is to follow with that individual child. And then I, stay, I take steps in that direction. Um, one thing I try to do in homeschool for sure is I know my shortcomings and I know my weaknesses and I have to look to the Lord to be that perfect power in my weakness. Um, I try to give my children the tools that they would need 
to go for it on their own and not have to look to me um, to teach them every little thing. So that's why I try to stay away from a lot of prepared work. Now I know I do share some prepared work and things that um, things that I prepare for them ahead of time. But if you would notice, a lot of that is stuff that um, does not have to be used. And once it's done, it can be reused over and over again whenever they would like to, in whatever way they would like to. So I try to stay away from work that requires a lot of instruction from me um, because I want to give them the tools and the permissions you know to just fly you know you have a question about something here is how you can find the answer um, here are some apps and some tools and some other things to help you figure these things out without always having to have me at 100% in order to figure them out um, because the reality is that they're gonna far exceed you know what I know fairly soon <laughs> and I'm okay with that um, and I want them to do that because every parent I feel like wants uh, wants their child to go farther than they go I just have to choose very quickly not to entertain the guilt and remind myself of those scriptures that I stand on that say that you know the Holy Spirit teaches us all things um, and that his grace is sufficient and that his power is made perfect in my weakness. And those scriptures for me help shut down those guilty feelings. Now every now and then those guilty feelings creep in and I spend far too many days um, obsessing over not being enough. But um, as I move along, I learn how to shut that down as quickly as possible as soon as I feel like it's coming on. Um, because if you let it come on, it's harder to get off. To be honest, as far as being committed to my kids and the businesses and my family and, and whatever else, that I just have such a strong vision in my mind about the things that that we can do and the things, the difference that we can make in the world. It's so strong, you guys. <laughs> and... um it's hard to manage a lot of times because a lot of it feels very out of my reach. The best thing I can do is trust God and receive his grace. Um, as far as what I, you know, how I do that is the Lord has really been leading me to a place where I set up um, a schedule of sorts. And not like a rigid schedule, um, like a hustle harder type of schedule. I feel like as a business owner, I am in a slightly different position than maybe others because I feel like I just have a lot more weaknesses um, when you're a full-time homeschooling mom. At least that's been my experience. And I've had to embrace those weaknesses a lot more. So to hustle hard, you know, all night, all weekend, it's not the way I do business. It's just not. Um, it's the way I'd like to think I do business, but I don't <laughs> because, because the reality is that I just don't have that in me. I don't have that in me to be up all night and all weekend and still give, you know, what I want to give to the kids during the day. So I just have to lean in and rely on God's grace. I, I make a list of everything that I want to get accomplished throughout the week. Um, so planning time for homeschool or time that I allow just for working, working on marketing for the business or time that I allow to edit. And what I am trying to move towards is learning how to give of myself during that time as much as I can. And then when that time frame is over to just trust that the Lord will do the rest. So for example, if I have, um, I normally have an hour laid out in the morning to work on the Falco marketing. And in my mind, I'm like, I am gonna get all of these things done, you know, that are on my list for marketing. And in that one hour, I'll sit down and try to give all of myself. Now, of course, I am a homeschooling mom. I don't have a babysitter. It's 
me. So in that hour, they ask for food. You know, there is a mess or other things happen. But what I'm trying to do is learn that, look, I'm going to use this hour and I'm going to do whatever I can. Now, I may think that I'm going to get done with 28 emails. Um, <laughs> see. <laughs> I may think I'm going to get done 28 emails and two marketing campaigns. And I literally only get one email reply to in that hour. But. I am learning to sit down and do whatever I can and then at the end of that time just give it to the Lord and I trust that your grace will do the rest. So um, the more I do that the more I can imagine that maybe that one email that I did reply to um, you led me to reply to that one and that one made all of the difference you know and that's kind of where I am. I realize that there are a lot of people out there hustling, you know, at their businesses or, you know, doing all these extra things for homeschool. And I'm just really trying to be in a place where I'm using wisdom to do the right thing for us. And I think with that, it requires patience because the reality is because I'm not out there hustling to get all the shirts sold or anything, I really have to stay true to what is foundational in my business and that is not money. So I do have to learn how to sacrifice that desire for immediate sales, you know, as an indicator of success in my business. So that's not something that I look for. It's something that I would really like, but it forces me to um, practice more patience and to stay true to what is our foundation in business and what is really important. It's humbling. It's a really humbling experience because um, you just can't, you can't measure your success based off of the things that most people would. I can't measure my success based off of how many t-shirts I've sold or how many math facts they can, you know, recite in a minute. So I measure my success differently and I have to look to the Lord to help show me what things are really important. So for instance, you know, maybe they're having trouble getting 30 math facts done in a minute. But when we go out to the store and we're purchasing something and they can tell me, you know, how much change they receive back or, you know, just things like that. And um, a lot of times I overlook those things, those things that show that I am actually being successful. And then the Lord will always point them out to show me that, you know, this is actually the right thing that you're looking for. Does that make sense? And in business, I guess a business example would be that um, success to some people may be 18,000 emails and tons of, subs you know, thousands and thousands of subscribers. But I have to look to the Lord to show me that this one email that I received all week that changed someone's life in a certain way, you know, that it meant more than thousands of subscribers emails or people that want to work with you or give you things or whatever. I have to look to the Lord to help me redefine what is success in the kingdom and what is success as far as what his purpose and vision for our lives is. Does that make sense? Okay, so so this is going to get really, really long. Okay, <laughs> so I'm not going to do that. Tyndall got juice without asking. He got juice without asking? Yes. Well, what in the world? <laughs> what in the world? Look at this cutie. Um, cutie. <laughs> it wouldn't be a good video if she didn't make an appearance, right? What's appearance? It means that you showed up. Like, ta da! You do it. Ta da! <laughs> So yeah, I'm pretty sure that this was all over the place and hopefully that kind of sort of 
was a somewhat beginning sufficient reply. I just think that when you have a vision, a really strong vision to do all the things, you have to take actions to move towards that. And you have to be willing to stumble through it because I'm, I'm stumbling even, through, okay? I, so just in case you didn't I know that I was stumbling through, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? You're funny. 